So Modern Warfare 3 is upcoming. We've got COD next in just about two weeks time. We've got the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer beta immediately to follow that. And then we're just a few more weeks away from the campaign early access and full launch of Modern Warfare 3. So we're on the precipice of tons of information knowing exactly what the game will hold in its entirety. And as such, I wanted to take one of the last few days of like non-news coverage we probably have here in the foreseeable future and talk about changes that I'd like to see made to Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer and the subsidiary offerings. Full disclosure, I think that we have a similar video scheduled in about two weeks time as I'm traveling to visit some friends and then jump down to LA for COD next, but that video's emphasis is on items that I'd like to see in the game that aren't in the game yet. Today, I want to discuss a bit of changes for existing features and situations that we have that I believe would make Modern Warfare 3 a much better experience. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below on what you'd like to see change in Modern Warfare 3 ahead of all these reveals. I mean, who knows? Maybe one of these will happen. But if you enjoy the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 3 and more as we've got a very packed fall season upcoming. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market where Code Espresso can get you 10% off your entire order, but more on that a little later. For now, let's take a look at some changes that I'd like to see made for Modern Warfare 3. So we already know about these big ones here to the core gameplay mechanics. We know things like movement changes, pacing changes, time to kill and health changes. We've talked about all that kind of stuff with the reveal when we actually got that officially confirmed to us. But there's still a lot of unknowns and a lot of features that haven't been mentioned on if they will be changed, if they won't be changed. And so that's where I want to dive in. In no particular order of importance or anything like that, one place that I want to start is the firing range. Modern Warfare 2 introduced the firing range here where you could end up going in and testing out some of your builds before actually jumping into game, which was definitely a nice addition, but it's a very, very bare bones firing range at that. Not a whole ton that really will allow you to hone in on specific builds, specific recoil plots or anything like that. So for that, I would love to see it expanded upon. I'd love to see recoil pattern plots, programmable targets, simple stuff like moving, dummies behind cover, sprinting, stuff like that. And one big thing is I'd love to see damage numbers on the dummies so that you know exactly what you're doing for each individual shot. So you can see the damage values on if you hit them on the arm versus chest or head. So you can see just how everything is going to break down entirely. That also leads into detailed statistics but again that's stuff that isn't in the game currently with modern warfare 2 that i'd like to see so we'll probably expand upon that a little later on down the line in that follow-up video here for while i'm traveling but the firing range i just think could be so much more in terms of helping players out helping to allow players to practice and hone in on their skills without having to go into match and sacrifice any statistics any streaks they have or anything like that it's just a nice way to in-house allow you to get ready for any sort of combat you may have in whatever mode you end up playing. Second, I want an indicator of streaks back. That was one thing that was in Modern Warfare 2 in the beta, and for whatever reason was taken out for the full build. And yes, we still have those little ribbons that pop up on screen on your HUD if somebody's on a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on kill streak. But you also used to get the actual indicator for whatever kill in particular you got as it happened. One, two, three, all the way up to whatever number, all individually listed. And that was a change that I truly don't understand why it was made. To me, it has absolutely no negative effect that it's there on your HUD showing you where you're at. If anything, it just gives you more information and what you should be conscious of if you're approaching a, say, MGB streak or something like that. So don't know why that's the case. Honestly, when we're talking about held elements as well, I'd love to see those calling cards for in-match notifications as well. Streaks, streaks coming in, who captured what. It seems like we took all that information that we had beforehand and just dumbed it down to stuff that honestly doesn't really matter a whole ton, but also takes away from some of the customization that they're trying to sell you in every single bundle with calling cards, emblems, and stuff like that. So like, I don't understand why they took that away as well. Not to get too far on a tangent there with that, another thing that I'd like to see return and change is wrappable streaks. Right now in Modern Warfare 2, same in Vanguard, same in Modern Warfare 2019, you could not get multiple streaks per life. That to me is one of the things that I think is a change that was mismanaged in the grand scheme of Call of Duty. When you look back at the classic games, one of the things that people loved was going on streaks, getting those kill streaks or score streaks and using them a ton. Now, yes, this change was probably made to mitigate any sort of streak spam that made it unplayable, 
But honestly, if you're going on a tear, why can't you get a second UAV? Why can't you get a second advanced UAV to keep that kind of streak going? Having wrappable streaks and being able to recycle that and go through your entire streak system again, that to me is what made going for streaks in multiplayer a lot of fun. If I got two chopper gunners in a life, I could use two chopper gunners in a life. But honestly, for me, a lot of the times I play non-lethal streaks for the most part, or at least like two of three are non-lethal. So like even just that, I just want one more UAV or advanced UAV per life. Anytime that I go on a nice streak, I usually just have to try and absolutely go kill hungry during my advanced UAV because I know if I get to 20 to 25 kills, my team's not going to get a UAV. They never do, so I'm always going to choke that MGB. And speaking of nukes, I'd like to see this changed just for the sake of like nostalgia and just for fun variability in it. I mean, if we're getting a set of Modern Warfare 2 remastered maps, I do think that it'd be awesome to be able to have a nuke that maybe doesn't end the entire game, but can like in 2009, utilize kill streak kills to get that 25 to 30 kills and then also keep that game ender streak for only the 25 to 30 gun streak kills so you kind of have both of those here which i think would be really cool and again play for that nostalgia of being able to chain together your previous harrier chopper gun or nuke from the original modern warfare 2 but in a more modernized fashion while also being able to end the game and have those ultimate bragging rights of actually ending the game for gun streaks i think just for nostalgia i think it'd be really cool to hear that tactical nuke or equivalent go off in such an old school way that's just me but next i'd like to see the spawns return back to a traditional spawn system modern warfare 2 and modern warfare 2019 have for whatever reason just been insistent on squad spawning systems personally i don't know if i minded it as much in modern warfare 2 as i did in modern warfare 2019 but truthfully just going back to that classic spawn system again would be something that i just think is so much better for gameplay flow and feel beyond that UI, of course, is a big talking point. I'd be remiss by not mentioning this. I'm really, really hoping for a change in the UI, but I'm also not expecting it. With a unified focus across PC, console, and mobile, we've already seen what mobile will still continue to look like, and even Sledgehammer tweeted an image associated with the campaign details that gave insight into some of the weapon selection and shared a since-deleted image of the class selection and it looks rather similar to Modern Warfare 2, but like, I mean, if you look at it, I forget who tweeted this the other day, but I remember seeing that somebody mentioned that there was a how to access, I think it was like campaign or something like that from the UI of Modern Warfare 2, and it had 100,000 views for how to access the UI of Modern Warfare 2. If you've got 100,000 people funneling to one video on how to navigate a menu, that's not a good indicator that it's a very well laid out UI. That's just me, maybe, but oh, also kind of relating to UI and HUD elements. Let's get Hardcore actually working in private matches again. There's been the HUD and Hardcore since it replaced Tier 1 in like Season 2 or whatever for Modern Warfare 2. And at this point, I'm just convinced that Infinity War just doesn't even know that it's a thing. Like, I'm convinced they actually think that Hardcore works as intended in private match and just haven't looked at it since. But anyways, that's my mainline Modern Warfare 3 changes that I'm hoping to see. Obviously, I'm sure that I've probably missed a ton of things, but jumping over to Warzone here, I want to see core movement return here at this please for the love of god do not give us what we want in modern warfare 3 and then make it a different feeling for warzone that to me is the whole point of unified engine right to avoid that system shock of different feeling games like we had within black ops cold war and warzone that year of support there were two very different games but utilizing the same weaponry and stuff like that so i'm hoping that that unified system can help the overall fluidity and we have these movement mechanics and stuff like that within warzone and listen i'm fully adjusted but still after 10 months of play Playing this game right now, it still feels just really clunky to me. Again, that's just me. I'd like to see the continuation of Ranked. Warzone, I don't think will be going anywhere just yet, so I'm not really too worried about that. I think that's still going to continue on from Season 6 right into Season 1. I don't think we're going to have a down period of a couple of seasons where there's no Ranked for Warzone, but relating back to Modern Warfare 3, I do hope that it's at least there at launch or Season 1. Nothing later. To me, especially on the Warzone side of things, it kind of devalued the work towards grinding for things like camos recently based on Rank, because in this case, we see things across Across Modern Warfare 2 ranked and Warzone ranked, you get camos for rank, but you only have a season to really utilize that in Season 6 once it's awarded to players. Having that short a time kind of devalues that grind, I think. Obviously, if those camos continued on, you could put them onto Modern Warfare 3 weapons, it'd be a different story, but you can't. So if I want to show off that camo a little further after integration or in Modern Warfare 3 with the carry forward, I mean, I can, but I'm kind of putting myself at a disadvantage because if it's anything like what we've seen with the integrations in the past, a Modern Warfare 3 guns are going to be better. And then finally, I'd like to see some server stability, man. Packet loss is so incredibly annoying, and it just happens 
all the time. Grinding out ranked this entire season, I thought it was bad whenever I'd have spotty matches with packet loss, but then after hitting iridescent and kind of knowing I'm not going to cap out the top 250, I'm still like 10,000 SR behind that. Going back and playing Warzone regular pub matches, oh my god. God, it's so much worse. I didn't think it was possible to have such a different feeling connection from public matches to ranked, especially when there's 50 less players and it plays so much slower. Like there's not as much populating that server, but I mean, I was wrong. So I'm really hoping that stuff is ironed out here for Modern Warfare 3's your support. Now, the final things that I will touch on here are just some general ones. Firstly, kind of relating to Call of Duty in general is... I want to see a change for XP tokens and how they work, man. I wasn't really sure how to categorize this one, so I just kind of put it in the general tab. But we recently saw that there was a free-to-play period announced for Modern Warfare 2, but the weird part, it was only free for two and a half hours of in-game playtime, calculated in-game, not real-world time, which is the exact opposite of how things like XP tokens work anymore. In prior games before Modern Warfare 2019, XP tokens did work only with in-game time, but not so much anymore. So make that fair again if we're going to end up doing stuff like this, like time trials of actually in-game. If you can calculate it with a free-to-play period, you can surely do that with an XP token. Then finally, the last thing I want is, well, communication with the community. It's so refreshing to see things from, like, devs at X Defiant currently. Sledgehammer has done it in the past. They used to actively surf the subreddits. They tweeted. They even had a weekly blog post and series over on their community and blog page on their website. I fully get that AAA studios have a ton of red tape to go through to communicate. I mean, internal messaging that has to go through and turn through marketing comms in a sort of PR sense for the studio. Then that messaging has to pass through Activision Legal and PR. So at the minimum, five steps here before being able to get some stuff out that could be simply, hey, check this weapon nerf out or something like that. But being transparent with things, I think, is always worthwhile. It reassures players, even if it's not necessarily what they want to hear, that at least they're not being left in the dark at that point. There is reasoning and logic explained and clearly communicated with the player base. Infinity Ward, the official COD account, and even Raven recently have all gone radio silent unless it's tweeting about a playlist, a seasonal update, and barely anything since. Or in the case of COD, it's just a marketing machine for bundles now with most tweets being designated to hey check out this bundle buy this bundle please communicate with players that's just honestly all i'm asking in that sense but anyways that's some stuff that i'm hoping to see changed from this year in modern warfare 2 over into modern warfare 3 is it some lofty things that may happen may not who knows but it is something that those are my hopes and i'm sure again I missed definitely a couple of things that are probably glaring. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything else. I know as soon as I publish this, I'm going to come up with like five more things I could add. But anyways, that is what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage. They recently just launched their Diablo frames. So if you're like me, you like aviator style frames for glasses, these are definitely for you. They're the best blue light glasses company on the market, in my opinion, most lightweight, comfortable, and durable frames out there. But I truly can't do enough justice for the science, the technicalities behind all of it. So I I'll leave the link down there in the description below where you guys can check out all of what they have on offer and what they can do for you but i've worked with these guys for two years now and truly i think they're the best out there so if you guys want to check it out link in the description below and if you guys want to pick something up for yourself code espresso can get you 10 percent off your entire order and get you a nice little discount there but that said that is what i call it drop your thoughts down below if you enjoyed the video you found it at all insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing to stay there with all things modern warfare 3 x defiant and even more fps content here upcoming we still got modern warfare 2 season 6 here so a lot of stuff. If you guys would like to join the community, I'd love to have you. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. See you later. Take care and peace.